Hello, this is Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We are at Telecom TV's very first standalone event, which is the DSP Leaders Forum being held here in Windsor. I'm talking with Neil McRae, Chief Architect of BT. Hi, Martin. Hi, Neil. Good to see you again. Fairly wide-ranging interview this. Let's begin with, with this. How much of BT's network is going to be new in the 5G world? And how is your current physical network within BT going to play a role in delivering 5G services? Um, really good question. I think, um, let me start with the second question. So right now, um, our 5G network's up and running. We actually launched yesterday. And from next week, you can go into any one of our stores and buy a 5G phone. Um, so we are first. Um, we've beaten all the competition, which is, you know, the usual thing that we do. Um, and something that we're very proud of. The service level is great. The feedback from from you know industry analysts has been fantastic. Um, we're doing that. We're leveraging our 21C network, which is a really high capacity platform that we use for fixed broadband. It carries over 10 terabits a second. It's scaled for 5G. And and I think when we started the 5G work just after we acquired EE. What was clear to me was is there was two things coming at us that was quite, if you like, big juggernauts that could that could derail us. The first was um, ultra fast broadband, FTTP and GFAST, and that's been moving at a dramatic rate. And OpenReach, our colleagues at OpenReach, do are doing a phenomenal job connecting 20,000 homes every week with FTTP. Absolutely st staggeringly amazing job. The second was 5G, which is, you know. Imagine millions of people walking around with a phone that can generate, you know, 500 uh, megs worth of traffic wherever they happen to be. And that's quite a big step up from what we're used to today. Um, so we really started looking at the 21C network, the core of BT's network, to really scale up. Um, we put a new platform in from Nokia SRS platform. We're first to deploy it. It's working beautifully. We put a new platform in from Sienna, their, their uh, new chipset on the 6500, really taking that next generation step, which is, which is doing a, mul a multiple series of things. One, it's reducing cost for us. Two, it's reducing energy usage in, in a world of sustainability is super important. And three, reducing actual footprint in some of our network sites, which is, which is also um, very important. And actually there's a fourth one, um, all of these platforms that we're, that we're deploying give us much more control and automation around them. And, and you know, probably something that's worth discussing f later on, but I would say that's probably, of all the things, probably the most important thing, which is automation um, and, and, you know, taking away the high OPEX cost of, of running these networks. <clears throat> As we move into 5G, well, clearly all the 5G radios that we've been building and we're in six cities now, and we'll, we'll, we'll soon expand that to, to 14 or 15 later this year. Um, all of that's a new platform. Yes, it, it, today it's, it's intertwined with the 4G network, um, but right now we're very, um, very well um, deployed down a path of moving to a 5G core network. And that network is uh, microservices, it's cloud native. Um, we're using technology. We're using not technologies, but working models um, that you would call continuous integration, continuous deployment. Things that have come from the IT world, or the or the kind of hyperscale world, and and are now really important for us as telcos because it allows us to deploy fast. It allows us to. Um, be able to update things really simply. Our biggest challenge is, you know, when a supplier comes along and says, oh, you need to deploy the next version. It's like, ooh, we don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> and and but, but in this world of working, the new version could come every day. And, and in a world where, you know, every time I, I log on to the internet, someone's launched something new, um, as telcos, I think that becomes more and more important for us. Um, so over the next few years, you know, we're we're regenerating all of all of the the BT network, and and I think whilst doing that, we're connecting millions of homes with FTTP. We're rolling out five G to be bigger and better than anyone else in in the country, and I think BT is really showing 
as, as the incumbent telco of the UK, which, which we often take criticism for not doing enough. I think we're really showing that actually, you know, when we've put, now that we've put our mind to, to this and we've got, um, you know, certainty around some, some of the, these investments, we can really roll it out at scale and at pace, and such that, you know, we've rolled out more fibre than pretty much all the other operators put together um, in a very short space of time. And, and that really shows the, the, the scale and the, the know-how that we've got. Um, but, but also, most importantly, we're doing it when customers need it. Um, you know, we could have done fibre 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but actually no one would really need it. And, and it's, a, you know, it's a big investment. We'll spend billions of pounds over um, the next few years on 5G deployment and on FTTP deployment. And it's important that we make a return on that because the next technology will need investment and we need to be able to invest in that. And, and I think that's, that's crucial for us. Of course, 5G is greatly predicated on new service operating, offerings, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and many of them will be on demand and customized to optimize the user experience. You, you talked about automation, we'll come to that in a minute. What, first though, what role will orchestration play in fulfilling those sort of requirements? Yeah, I think orchestration is going to be, be really important. Um, you know, our, our first um, toe in the water of 5G is very much about enhanced mobile broadband. It's, it's kind of the service that we've offered quite a lot of on 4G with a bit more reliability and, and a hell of a lot more speed. I think as we move forward, I think, um, and, and where I've always believed the sweet spot for 5G will be is an enterprise. And, and there's many use cases where that whole orchestration piece can, is going to be crucial, where organizations need to scale up a capability, perhaps in a different location, or perhaps they've, you know, they said, we're gonna open up, we've bought the building next door, we need to open up more, more um, supply chain, our ability to scale up and, and expand the services that we, we offer with them. I think it's going to be really important. As much as it's important of just connecting them, um, the whole service chaining approach to, hey, you're a, a retail uh, organization, here's our retail service chain that gives you, you know, ac good access to the credit card clearing, it gives you great access to online so people can use technologies to see themselves in the clothes that they're buying or or to, to check the price even. We see, you know, increasingly um, retailers giving people an opportunity to check the price. And being able to turn that on, you know, um, the whole supply chain on, you know, almost instantly, I think it's going to be really important. If I think about manufacturing, the ability for manufacturers to re-orchestrate their own um, supply chain in their whole production line, you know, from one week to the next. So, you know, perhaps one week they're making widget one, the following week they're making widget two, their ability to retool uh, and our ability to give them the network and the services that, that enables that retooling, I think is going to be very important, um, if not crucial. And, and actually, I think, you know, we're, there's a lot of talk about this at the moment. I think it'll become like many of the things that in, in telecommunications we are, you know, I remember all we used to talk about was CDNs. Now we never hear about them. No. Um, I think that orchestration will become such table stakes. Eventually it'll just be the norm. And, and, and you know, being able to deploy at scale um, will be a natural thing for us. Telcos are brilliant at deploying at scale on physical infrastructure, I, you know, Mention what OpenReach are doing with FTTP and what we've done with 5G. Um, we need to learn that that process and that capability for much more software-based solutions, so that we can deploy at scale. Um, and working with you know some of our partners in that space, like like Google and Amazon, is really helping us move in that direction. Neil McRae, as usual, absolutely fascinating. Great to see you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Martin. It's been a pleasure to be here.